Hey there, it's Lara here. Welcome to the Halloween or Samhain edition of Witchy Wednesday for the week of October 31st to November 6th, 2018. So, um... I'm trying to get in the spirit here. <laughs> Not going to lie. It's more difficult than usual this year for me, uh, it seems. I really love this time of year. And uh, always loved Halloween. It's been a sort of a big deal in my family. But um, there's a lot of tension going on in the skies right now. And I'm going to talk to you about that in this um in this report, and there's a lot to talk about, and I'm going to try to squeeze it all in. Um, but, you know, if you're feeling a little uh, pulled in all directions right now, just know you're not alone. Um, there's a big opportunity here for, you know, a karmic reset of sorts. And last week in the video, I talked to you, you know, I titled the video, I think, Plot Twist. Um, and it was, I focused on the, the full moon in Taurus that happened last week while I was on vacation in um, Boston, the Boston area and visited Salem and, uh, you know, had some um, really amazing experiences. Um, don't really have time to talk to you about all that here today but if you follow along on Facebook and Instagram then you get more regular updates right and you would have seen some pictures and that kind of thing so um, the links to both of those are below and you can check them out um, and uh, you know go like the pages or follow me what what have you and of course if you haven't subscribed to the channel here yet I really um, appreciate it if you're interested in you know, getting these weekly videos and anything else I put out. Um, constantly, constantly have plans in the works for doing more, but uh, sometimes life just doesn't allow it to happen on my schedule, right? Um, anyways, but but please do like the page and, and thanks for your comments and, um, and all of that. So I'm not going to keep this mask on the entire time because it may be a little distracting for you. Um, but I bought this a couple of weeks ago. I saw it and I was like, I have to have that. So it's my little, um, you know, nod to the, to the Halloween spirit and, uh, and to Samhain. So speaking of that, um, happy Samhain to those of you who, who celebrate that. Um, it's, Samhain is like a, the, the pagan holiday, the witch's holiday. It's a Gaelic tradition um and it, it marks the the official end of the harvest season and the beginning of winter right and it's really a time of you know honoring our ancestors and that whole cycle of death and rebirth right it's a cycle and so in some ways when you see around this time of year you know these um costumes of of skeletons and zombies and you know dead things that's sort of our modern day way of um of paying tribute there you know so but really in the traditional sense it's it's a time of year where we we reflect on on the past and we you know, again, we honor our, our ancestors and uh, all of all of those who came before us and what they have taught us, um, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly kind of thing. Um, and, and it's really a time of we're moving into those colder winter months in the Northern Hemisphere of, um, you know, spending more time indoors and really you know, having more time for reflection, um, and, and nesting and denning in and all of those things. Right. So, um, I think before I go on with the rest of the report, I'm going to, I'm going to ditch the mask here. Um, I'm loving wearing it, but it's kind of interfering with my sight line to my notes. So here I am. Um, and 
I guess the first thing I want to mention to you is that, you know, you heard me talk about this whole, the tension that you may be feeling. And that's because there is what we call a, um, a grand cross in the fixed signs happening right around now. And it's actually sort of peaking today on the 31st. And I'm going to show you the chart right away so you can see what I'm talking about. And then I'm going to uh, get into it a little bit more. So here's the chart for, for today, um, just for about 15 minutes ago. And I, the one thing I really want to draw your attention to is, can you see this configuration? Right? A cross. Think of a cross and, um, you know, it's sort of being pulled in all directions, right? There is tension um, in four directions, four opposite directions. And so here we've got um, this Grand Cross happening between Venus just, it's retrograde, right? So moving backwards at zero degrees Scorpio, about to tip back into Libra. Um, later today, in fact, and I'm going to talk about that as well in this report, we've got Uranus at zero degrees Taurus, right? And um, that was conjunct. Uranus and Taurus was conjunct the full moon that just happened, right? And we've got um, the north node at zero degrees Leo and the south node at zero degrees Aquarius. Um, we also have Mercury that's just entering Sagittarius as well today. Um, so, you know, really, I want, like I said, to point this out. There's this fixed grand cross happening in the sky. And um, so right around now and over the last couple of days and even moving into the next couple of days, right, because these things don't tend to just happen at a point in time, you may be feeling, all of us collectively, but ind individually as well, right? And in, in, in some areas of life are feeling this pull in all directions, this, this tension. Um, and it's actually ha happening, as I said, at zero degrees of the fixed signs. So the fixed, the fixed signs, <laughs> excuse me, are Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, and Aquarius. And fixed energy is that energy of just just what it sounds like, um, stubbornness, right? Of steadfast fastness, of sticking to your guns, of not really wanting to to change, um, of just sort of wanting to keep things as they are, um, you know, and fixed signs are the signs that mark the the middle of the seasons they're right in the middle so they're 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 fixed right and so if you have planets and points particularly at the very early degrees of the fixed signs you will feel this probably um quite a bit but everybody is feeling it in some area of life for the what i did here was i broke it down into the the axes that are being highlighted or impacted for each of um, the fixed, the mutable, the cardinal signs. And if you don't know what those are, it's okay. I'm going to tell you. Um, but if you if you ever have a reading with me, then you know I point these things out and the, these energies and how they're broken down in your own personal chart as well. So anyway, um, so I mentioned what the fixed signs were already. That's Taurus, Scorpio, Leo, and Aquarius, right? And so for you, um, this Grand Cross is lighting up the axes of um, the self versus the other, right? So the first and seventh house and the, um, the private life versus the public life, fourth and 10th house houses. And so these are the areas very briefly, because I'm going to get into each, each sign. Um, I'm going to talk about Libra shifting and Uranus shifting signs at the end of the video and, you know, specifically for each sign, but I wanted to point this out here for you. So, so for the, Fixed signs, that's where the axes that are being highlighted 
over these next few days um, where you may feel some tension happening and being pulled in all directions, right? So that's for the fixed signs. For the cardinal signs, which are Aries, Libra, Cancer, and Capricorn, those are the signs that mark the beginning of seasons, right? So they're the initiators. Um, it's that sign of of new beginnings or that uh, energy of new beginnings, the, the initiation, the impulse, right? Um, and so for the cardinal signs, Aries, Libra, Cancer, Capricorn, this tension is happening on the axes of um, form versus transforming. So formation versus transformation, second and eighth house for formation of, you know, material the material world and then transformation of um of the material of you know that cycle of death and rebirth that kind of that kind of thing um sort of like alchemy and then also the individual versus the group or the collective right so those four themes are sort of playing out or being highlighted right now at this moment in time for you um, and for the mutable signs of Virgo, Pisces, Sagittarius, and Gemini, the axes that are being lit up for you are that, that axis of the spiritual versus the mundane, right? So our spiritual life um, versus our daily affairs kind of thing. And then the axes of the lower mind versus the higher mind. So sort of our like our day-to-day -day thoughts and ideas and communications versus the bigger picture. Um, and that's all condensing it down very much and putting it very simply. But I wanted you to be aware of this energy that's really um, happening today, you know, around these next few days. And it's again, it's at zero degrees. All these planets and points are at zero degrees. And so zero degrees is significant because it marks the, the fresh start. The, it's like a karmic reset. It's zero degrees is that initial impulse of that energy, right? And so we can be very um, sort of optimistic and um, see all the possibilities but at the same time if you think of something being a fresh new start that can also be a little bit confusing and a little bit we can feel a little green right a little not knowing um what direction to take a little reckless because all these possibilities are there right and so um so that's the fixed fixed uh cardinal grand cross that i wanted to mention to you um and this is, you know, one more thing I wanted to say about that is, is we're at this time and I spoke a little bit about this, I think in last week's video too. And I encourage you to go back and listen to that because those full moon energies are still with us right now. Um, but you know, it's a time where we have this opportunity to break free of old trauma, of old patterns, of old habits, um, of past karma for, for, for real, right. Of old, you know, obsessions and and power struggles, um, in in relationships of all of all sorts, kind of thing, and so it's not the time to be asleep at the wheel right now. Um, but it's not. It's just, you know, it's not an easy. Um, it's not easy to navigate. I'm feeling it big time myself. And uh, truthfully, I started feeling it gradually from the full moon. And then it's just, it's just, you know, gotten heightened. And, I, and then when I really took a good look at the astrology and the chart and, and realized that this, this grand cross was going on, it was a bit of a light bulb moment for me, right? Um, so that the awareness is good to have. But as I've said before, it doesn't always make it uh, easy to deal with. But, but be aware of where this is playing out for you. Okay, the other things I want to mention to you right now are um, Mercury is entering Sagittarius later today on the 31st, right? And we're going to have a Mercury retrograde in Sag that's happening. It begins mid-November around the 15th. Um, to about December 6th. So 
it's going to spend an extra long time in Sagittarius because of the retrograde. And when Mercury's in Sagittarius, Mercury's the planet of our thinking, right? The messenger god. Um, our thinking, our communication, our ideas, that kind of thing. And so we can tend to be more, more curious around this time, more optimistic, um, have more faith, and, uh, you know, even be a little bit more sort of courageous in our, in our thinking and ideas. Um, rather than sort of probing the depths, which was Mercury and Scorpio, we are looking at the bigger picture. Um, you know, Sagittarius is an expansive energy, right? Optimistic. So we're looking at the bigger picture around this time, which is great. But um, the one thing to be mindful of is just that, you know, we can tend to lose sight of the details. And so, uh, you know, it's good to just be aware of that. And then we have Venus retrograding back into Libra and that's happening later today too so you see we've got um Venus retrograde at zero degrees Scorpio and then she's going to shift back into Libra and be at you know the 29th degree of Libra so that um cusp between signs is is significant it's significant um and so you know, when, when Venus retrogrades back into Libra, this is happening um, until about November 16th that she's retrograding. And then she'll move forward, cover that same ground again, and eventually go back into, um, into Scorpio and continue moving forward. And that happens on December 3rd, Venus will re-enter Scorpio. She'll no longer be in retrograde. But so... You know, Venus in Libra, Venus likes being in Libra generally because it's it's her home, one of her home signs, right? And this is more about compromise and negotiation and harmony and balance um, and really idealism, you know, in, in Venusian matters of relationships and resources and um, beauty and aesthetic and, and self-worth, that kind of thing. So... So the energy of Venus will shift a little bit. Um, but on the shadow side, right, because everything has a, has a yin and a yang, right? With Venus and Libra, we can be a little too compromising. We can be passive aggressive. Um, we can be wishy-washy. And we can um, sort of stifle what we really feel and think and then that comes out in other ways right resentment and passive aggressiveness as I mentioned that kind of thing so you know it's a good time to seek balance and harmony in relationships and in your in your your sort of aesthetic space too and in terms of your relationship to yourself right um and your finances as well because Venus uh, also rules our 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 money in some ways. So I'm going to take a break, a breath here for a second. Um, so when Venus re-enters Libra, she's there to sort of do the, the mop up expedition, right? Right. So she had been in, in, in Libra and um, moved into Scorpio, which has been quite intense and moving back into to Libra, to the latter degrees of Libra, to sort of um, go back and, and, and just go, oh, wait a second, I forgot to do that kind of thing. Or, um, you know, do we need to take a second look at that? Or remember this kind of thing. It's, a, it's about something that's already begun or started that we need to, we need reminding of, or we need to pick it back up, or we need to to readjust in some way, right? And that's in regards to Venusian matters, like I said. So, you know, our resources, um, our our relationships, our values, our, our self-worth, that kind of thing. Um, so, In, at the end of the video, I'm going to go through all of the signs and talk about where the shift is happening for each of you and also where the shift of Uranus 
retrograding back into Aries is happening for each of you. So um, sit tight. I, I have a couple other things before we get there. Um, I wanted to mention here, I have this in my notes, that Jupiter is entering Sagittarius, moving out of Scorpio and entering Sagittarius on November 8th, right? I'm going to talk about that mainly in next week's video. So stay tuned for that. But what I wanted to say is that as Jupiter is nearing the end of its transit through Scorpio, it's having a conversation called a trine, um, which is a conversation of ease and flow and support um, with Chiron, the wounded healer in Pisces. So in the water signs, right? And so there is an opportunity here for healing as Jupiter finishes up in Scorpio, healing our outlook perhaps in some way, um, our ideas, our beliefs, our attitudes. Um, you know, we may be ready to share some healing wisdom or to receive some healing wisdom from a teacher in some some regard um you know we might be healing some past trauma again past wounding um there's an opportunity for this to happen at this time right and it's a supportive thing so i wanted you to be aware of that the next thing is on november 6th which is the day of the U.S. election um, next Tuesday, Uranus is retrograding back into Aries, right? I just mentioned that. So it's been in Taurus since May. And again, I've done a whole separate video on Uranus's transit into Taurus, which you can watch uh, on my channel. But it's it's moved in, it moved into Taurus and now it's retrograding and it's going to tip back into Aries for a little bit. It's going to um, be there until, well, it's going to move direct in January at 28 degrees Aries. So it's going to revisit the last couple of degrees of Aries. And, um, you know, as you heard me say, like the, the very beginning or the very ending of, of a sign is significant. It's a, it marks a significant um energy shift in some way. So um, once Uranus moves out of Aries, it won't be back there until 2094 because Uranus has a very long orbit of about 84 years or so. And so for most of us in this lifetime, we will not see that again. So this is a big deal here, right? Um, it's going back into Aries one final time, again, for a mop-up expedition to go, okay, what unfinished business is there that I need to take care of in this area before it makes its final, its transition into Taurus for good for the next sort of seven, eight years, right? And that will be March, around March 7th, my birthday, when it moves back into Taurus for the long haul kind of thing. So between now and then, between around November 6th and uh, early March, this is where this opportunity is for this cleanup of um, Uranus and Taurus. Sorry, Uranus and Aries. So wherever Aries sits for you, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. This will be the area that is... Um, asking you to to do that work um okay so i think at this point i'm going to start going through the signs before we run out of time and i think i've given you a lot to chew on thus far so what i'm going to do here is for each of the signs again rising sign is sort of the most significant for these general reports so if you know your rising sign please listen to that first and foremost um, of course if you've had a reading with me or perhaps another astrologer you'll know your rising sign or if you just you know you know your own chart then you'll know that um, and if you want a reading as always please get in touch 
um, the link is below to my site where you can connect with me. But so for each of the signs, listen to your rising sign, your sun sign, and your moon sign as well. And um, this will give you a fuller picture, especially when we're just talking about a general forecast like this, right? Um, a personal reading gets down to the nitty gritty of your personal specifics. So these are just general forecasts. So I've, I've talked about the axis that's lit up for you in terms of where the um, Venus is retrograding back into Libra and also where Uranus is retrograding back into Aries, right? And so I've talked about all of that for each of the signs. So I'm gonna start with Aries and for you, Aries, you've got um, this seventh and first house axis lit up. So it's the axis of self and other, right? It's the relationship axis. And the Venusian energy is revisiting, in your case, one of the houses that it's comfortable in, in the seventh, and um, which is the house of relationships like our one-to-one -one relationships. And so it's allowing you the opportunity as it retrogrades back into, um, into uh, Libra. It's allowing you the opportunity to tidy up, you know, your one-to-one -one re relationships kind of thing and get right in that area of life. So, and your, your close partnerships can tend to feel more harmonious at this at this time with uh, Venus in Libra for you. And then between November 6th and early March, right, this is the shift of Uranus back into Aries, it's sort of the last shakeup in terms of that area of life that has to do with the self, your physical appearance, um, you know, your vitality, your, um, how you approach the world right? And how you sort of come across to the world. Those, those, that area of life is up for sort of one more hit of Uranian energy, which is the energy of, you know, sudden surprises, uh, wake up calls, um, unexpected change. And it doesn't have to be a bad thing. So don't, don't think that, um, Oftentimes, if we're aware and we harness the energy and we use it, then, you know, things can be a little easier to handle. But Uranus is the energy, it's the great awakener, right? And so if we need a wake up call in this area of life um, and we haven't had it yet when Uranus was in uh, Aries before, this is likely the time that this is going to happen for you, Aries. Okay, moving on to Taurus. Um, so this energy is hitting your sixth and 12th houses. So it's the axis of our, our day-to-day -day affairs, like the mundane tasks, um, versus our spiritual life, right? Um, so the unseen kind of thing. And so Venus is revisiting your sixth house until early December. And it's time to think about, you know, is there some sort of final beautifying of your daily routine or your health and wellness routine? Um, is there some harmony that's needed in how you serve others even on the day to day, right? Because it's the, the house of service. So harmony and beauty um, in your in your daily affairs is on offer right now, right? So it's even possible that you can be doing some work-related socializing that's really quite uh, pleasant, you know, um, that can happen at this time as well. And then Uranus is having a sort of last hurrah for you in your 12th house. Um, and so there may be some final aha moments or revelations and, and or surprises in terms of your spiritual life. Um, in terms of, you know, that may happen when you're in solitude even because the 12th house is that, you know, signifies, among other things, that time we spend alone reflecting. 
Um, it could even be your blind spots in terms of where you don't realize your own power, right? So, you know, you're kind of getting this final call to, to be a spiritual warrior in a sense, Taurus. And, um, you know, you might even have some insights or aha moments or an awakening of sorts in terms of how you sabotage yourself and you may not even be consciously aware of, of it. So that's for you, Taurus. And for Gemini, Gemini rising, Gemini sun, Gemini moon, right? Um, this is happening in your fifth and 11th. So it's the axis of the personal versus the impersonal, right? The individual self versus the group. So Venus is re-entering your house of children and pleasure and your inner child and your creative self-expression. Um, and so she's kind of drawing your attention to those areas and does anything need to be, you know, revisited there or, or picked up where you left off kind of thing um, in terms of those areas of life. And it can be quite a pleasurable time uh, in that area of life with Venus being there as well. There's an ease and a, and a sort of harmony possible in that area right now, right? But you may be called to be doing some inner reflection because Venus is retrograde. And likely when Venus is, is retrograde, we're not talking about like new things that are happening in this area. It's things that have already happened or things we're already aware of that um, we're just being asked to, to revisit or to, pick, like I said, pick up where we left off, right? And then Gemini, um, Uranus is, it's bringing some final insights to, to the area of life that has to do with your friendship groups or um, your membership in organizations or associations, um, you know, clubs. It also has to do with your vision for the future. And so there may be some surprises that happen, some final surprises that happen in this area of life as Uranus tips back into Aries. Um, you know, you may feel a renewed push to sort of liberate yourself in this area of life as well. And uh, we may have, you know, for, for those people who are, are Gemini, Gemini rising, um, there may be some, you know, some, some awakening in some way in that life area. All right, Cancer, moving on to you. This is happening in the fourth and 10th houses. So it's this axis of private or home life versus public, um, like your career, your reputation kind of thing. And so Venus is retrograding back into your fourth house. And there will be this refocus on family relationships, likely, on um, maybe your place of living or issues regarding place of living, um, even matters of real estate. You might be feeling rather nostalgic at this time, right? Again, Venus retrograde is kind of looking back. And so um, in the fourth house, this may be looking back, um, you know, on your childhood even, um, on your ancestors, right? Um, that kind of thing. And sort of creating warm and fuzzy vibes on the home front at this time is, is, uh, is on offer for you. And Uranus retrograding back into Aries will be in your 10th house. And so there may be this sort of final wake up call, or it may bring you an insight in some way in terms of your public life or your career, your public reputation. Um, maybe you will even get some kind of surprise recognition. That's a possibility right now. But that area of life is, um, you know, with Uranus, Uranus just tipping back in there, it's like this this last um, shock of Uranian energy in that area of your chart. And when I say shock, again, it doesn't have to be a bad thing, right? Just uh, something sort of unexpected or surprising. All right, Leo, this is happening in your third and ninth houses. So this is the axis of the mind, the higher mind versus the lower mind. Um, and so, you know, it's this, it, it's a good time for, for personable conversations and exchanges of information. Um, your communication style at this time is probably more sort of, um, you know, friendly, likable, that kind of thing. And there may be more harmony and ease with communications. 
with Venus retrograding um, back into your third house, it's, it's drawing your attention to communication and perhaps in terms of relationships specifically, um, you know, or in terms of your resources and your values or your self-worth connected, you know, however that's connected to communications for you. Um, it might be a time when you have to sort of finesse your communications style in some way, right? And again, this won't necessarily, it won't be something new because Venus is retrograde. It's, it'll be sort of a picking up where you left off or something that needs revisiting in that area of life. And it could involve, you know, conversations or emails or that kind of thing um, in terms of your peers, your siblings, uh, cousins, neighbors, that kind of thing. It's possible as well. And then with Uranus retrograding back into your ninth house, Leo, this can bring some final aha moments um, or shakeups until March, right? Regarding your philosophy, your general outlook on life, your worldview, your beliefs, um, long distance travel, there could be some surprises and, and twists and turns there. And also perhaps what you learn from other cultures anything regarding teaching and learning, and even justice as well. So these are the areas of life um, that are going to be under that Uranian sort of awakening energy for you until March. And Virgo, this is happening in your second and eighth. So this is um, that axis of formation versus transformation, right? And Venus is revisiting your second house. Virgo. So um, that's a house where she's quite comfortable. And it's the house that has to do with our resources and our, um, our self-worth and our values and our material possessions even, right? And so she's drawing attention to things like, like, like that. Um, and again, not necessarily anything new, but it's a revisiting in that area. And, you know, maybe, um, you know, something needs to be sort of picked up where it was left off or finished up in that area as Venus tips back there. And, you know, it's possible, um, it's possible actually to have some kind of nice financial gain at this time too with, with Venus there because she is quite comfortable. And it's a good harmonious time to focus on those things, right? The matters of financial security in general. Um, or security in general, right? Including your values, your self-worth, that, that, that sort of foundational stuff. And then Virgo with Uranus tipping back into your eighth house um, until March. There can be some, some final aha moments or uh, surprises or awakenings or shifts or upheaval, right? In that area of shared resources, um, of intimacy, you know, your intimate relationships, and contacts and connections, um, also the area of secrets. So like, you know, for an example, just because this area always sounds a little elusive, right? It's hard to, to grasp. It can be um, like maybe on the, on the positive side of things, your uh, spouse gets some kind of inheritance, right? And then that you benefit from kind of thing. It could be something like that. Um, so that's for you, Virgo. And then moving on to Libra, this is happening in your first and seventh. So this is the relationship axis of, of self and other. So Venus is, is moving back into your first house, Virgo. And it's asking you to get right with how you love yourself. That's how I see this, right? Have you kind of fallen? And I think I might have just said Virgo, but I mean Libra. I'm talking about Libra right now. Um, have you fallen off the wagon, right? In terms of your relationship to yourself and your um your physicality your vitality um how you come across to others how you approach the world you know so it's a good time for attention on your your physical wellness right now um and all of those things how you project out there how you approach the world your physical appearance um it's a good time for all of that it's a harmonious time for that to focus on that and to maybe pick up where you left off, um, Libra. And so Uranus, Libra, is um, 
is tipping back into your seventh house, right? So it's bringing some, some final excitement to that area of life um, that governs your one-to-one -one relationships. So there can be some changes or some upheaval or some, some shakeups um, in that area of life. So, so maybe like a partner will have some, some exciting news to share with you, perhaps. Um, that's just one way it could play out, right? All right, so moving on to Scorpio. Um, Scorpio, this is hitting your 12th and 6th. So this is the axis of, of service or your day-to-day -day affairs versus your spiritual life. Um, and so Venus is, is retrograding back into the 12th house for you. And perhaps this is a time of revisiting your relationship to your inner world or your spirituality, right? It can be a good time to spend some alone time right now. Um, you know, it can be a time sometimes with, with uh, the 12th house, Venus in the 12th house, where you're feeling a bit isolated in relationships, but that is because it's time to focus on your relationship to, to you, to yourself and to, to spirit. Um, so, you know, or maybe there's just things happening more behind the scenes for you. And or there could be even some some sort of secret dealings in relationships or in terms of money and self-worth um, right now as well. That could be stuff going on behind the scenes for you. Um, and then Uranus is retrograding back into your sixth house, Scorpio. And this is some shakeups in your daily routine, right? And your health and wellness um, in perhaps how you are in service to others. And so there can be some final insights or changes or awarenesses happening in this area of life for you um, up until early March. You know, try to go with it and, and realize that this is kind of the last hurrah here with this Uranian energy um, before Uranus shifts, you know, for a good long time into Taurus. All right, Sagittarius. Um, this is happening in your 11th and your fifth house. So it's the axis of the personal versus the impersonal, the individual versus the group, right? And so Venus is retrograding back into your 11th. Um, and so this is nice for, for groups and friendships, those kinds of relationships. There can be lots of camaraderie, right? Not necessarily a lot of like real intimacy, but lots of, lots of friendliness and camaraderie. And you might be revisiting issues of value and worth in a group setting kind of thing. There can be a nice recharge in your friendship, uh, you know, groups right now as well. You're sort of picking up where you left off with some people perhaps. And then Sag, um, Uranus is transiting, retrograding back into your fifth house. So you're going to have some shakeups, um, some surprises, some final aha moments there regarding that area of life that has to do with children. Um, children, your own children are those you, you are connected to. Um, your inner child, your creative self-expression, um, and, and, you know, the, the pleasurable things in life, that's where that's happening for you. Um, and then Capricorn, this is happening in your 10th and fourth houses. So it's the private versus the public life again, right? Um, and so with Venus moving back into the 10th, it's a good time for making a good impression, a uh, public impression, perhaps in your career, right? Um, and it can be a time where sort of competence is really attractive to you right now. And, uh, you know, so so career matters. And again, revisiting something that's already you're already aware of or that already began. And it's, it's, it's a positive time for that. And then with Uranus moving into your back into your fourth, you know, sudden shifts, awakening surprises in terms of home, family, your roots, place of living, real estate those kinds of things, right? Again, until um, early March, you can sort of expect that. And then Aquarius, this is happening in your ninth and third houses. So it's that axis of the higher mind versus the lower mind, right? And with Venus retrograding back into your ninth, there can be, um, you know, some enjoyment from expanding your horizons, from exploring new places, new cultures, new, new topics, um, new philosophies, right? perhaps even connecting with new teachers. But again, it's not really new teachers and, and not so much new, but things that you are aware of and are revisiting now, um, you know. 
and you might have a bit of a taste for the exotic at this time in general. And then with Uranus moving back into your third, surprises and changes and insights in the area of communications, right? Of your ideas and your thinking, um, even short distance travel, there may be some, some you know, shakeups there, surprises, uh, and, they, and they could be good surprises too. And, uh, you know, conversations with peers, siblings, cousins can, can maybe, um, you know, awaken you in some way even. And then lastly, Pisces, this is in your eighth and second houses. And so it's that formation versus transformation, right? So there could be some financial gain through a partner even, right? There could be an opportunity to bond deeply with a partner or perhaps some healing even um, through shared intimacy because of this Venus retrograding back into your eighth. And then with Uranus retrograding back into your second until early March, those surprises and, and shakeups and aha moments can happen in the area of your personal resources, your self-worth, your material possessions, your money. Um, and those can be good surprises too. So, so good time, uh, you know, for that and last hurrah for that kind of thing. All right. All 12 signs, lots of information there. And I hope that it was valuable to you. Happy Halloween. Happy Samhain. I will see you next week. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye.